And welcome back to the Livingston Parish News Weekly Show, a podcast brought to you by the Livingston Parish News. This is from the Cheap Seats, where we talk about what's going on athletically here in Livingston Parish. I'm going to let this gentleman introduce himself real quick. Hey, this is Rob DeArman, sports editor with the Livingston Parish News. And today we have plenty to talk about. Oh, by the way, my name is McHugh David, publisher and editor of the news. Don't know if I uh, introduced myself or not. Um, As Rob and I were talking about before the show started, kind of a crazy weekend. Um, Of course, uh, the Saints still trying to find some kind of identity uh, after shutting out the Raiders, then turned around and uh, got embarrassed on Monday Night Football by the Ravens. Not a great look. But on Saturday, uh, you know, LSU beats Alabama and beats them, you know, not like 2019, as we discussed, where it was just this semi-pro team that went up there and played them. You know, this was a well-coached team that went toe-to-toe with Alabama. So that was that was good to see. And then six minutes after Mason Taylor catches that two-point conversion, the Houston Astros win the World Series. So we had a good weekend, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but getting into what's going on in sports here, talking about, uh, you know, good weekends, we talked about it with David Gray earlier today. Denver Springs High School taking on their rival Walker, finally got a chance to break in that new field. Um, we talked with him about the feeling and how everything, you know, it was a nice feeling. It was a feel good story. Want to talk to you about the game. And of course, that solidified a home playoff game for Denver. Correct. They'll be hosting Covington. <clears throat> Uh yeah, Denham Springs wins twenty to six. Uh, big thing here is is Denham gets three safeties on. It was basically on bad snaps into the end zone, uh, which you know I, I've been doing this for a while. Talk to the coaches about it on both sides, and it's it's just something you you don't see. Uh, and so that's where you get the majority of the, of the deal. Uh, the, the scoring. Uh, it was interesting talking to Coach Beard uh, earlier this week. He, he just. He he just kind of mentioned that hey you know uh, the, these are small things that maybe you don't pay attention to but you get uh, the first score in that in the new stadium is a defensive score on a safety uh, and he just kind of said he he kind of credit he goes hey that's for uh, that's for Smitty Coach Brian Smith who passed away last year their defensive coordinator uh, he he said it's it's kind of fitting one of those things you look at because uh, he was really instrumental in kind of helping uh, in, in planning the planning stages of that stadium. And he said that you, you don't miss out on that. Uh, the first touchdown was scored by Ray McNeely uh, in the stadium and puts uh, Denham Springs up, uh, I believe, 9 nothing at the time. And it's one of those, uh, just one of those deals. Uh, if you haven't been out there, I'll say this. If you haven't been out there to look at it, I don't know what schools you guys support, but you have to go take a look at the stadium. It's uh, it's uh, a monumental, if you will. And, and I remember... Uh, when Coach Andy McLean came in and, and took over uh, that track program, that was one of, the, one of the first conversations we had is like, we're a 5A school and we need a track. So uh, it, it's coming. It's coming together. You can see it down there. Uh, the outline is around the stadium, and I know he's happy to, to get close to that. Uh, but that, like I said, this uh, this kind of sets Denham Springs up, like you said, with, with Covington. Uh, just if you go back, uh, they played each other for a long time, for uh, probably a little bit over a decade there. Uh, and and – Coach Beard said you can look at the record, they're 5-5, five and five, but uh, he said he, he doesn't want his guys to kind of, you know, look at that and kind of feed into it because uh, he said if you if you follow their track record, Covington usually gets hot around playoff time. So uh, that's something that, he, he, you know, they have to be aware of. And uh, he also said, uh, you know, they, they, were, they felt like they left some points on the table against Walker. So he said, feel like we're when we're in between the 20s, we're doing well, and when we get into the red zone, we just kind of, you know, stall out. So uh, he said it, they're challenging everybody across the board right now. Uh, you know, going into week eleven, trying to trying to figure out uh, you know who are going to be those guys that are going to step up for them as they make this playoff run. Sure, and uh, I believe Denham is the only team with a home playoff. That's correct. Okay. That is correct. Well, let's uh, let's talk about uh, how Walker felt about that loss, and I believe they have they travel. Yes, they'll go to East St. John. Walker drew the number twenty two seed going to East St. John, uh, which is number eleven. Uh, you know, and one of those things that uh, you talk to every one of these coaches is about that having the opportunity to play in the playoffs because once you get in, you well know anything can happen. Uh, but I, you know, I, I talk with Coach Mahappy about the the situation with those snaps. You know, I said something you don't see, and he said it's just. Uh, you know, both sides. You got to get that. Maybe take a little, take a little mustard off of that snap, that long snap, the deep snap to the quarterback. At the same time, the quarterback has to be looking and have his hands ready. You know, in case it's not a good snap. But it, he said it's not like it's something new. He said we take 
hundreds of snaps at practice every day. It's just a matter of paying attention to details, you know, and, um, you know, he's, they're kind of in the same way. Just, <clears throat> he said, I thought at times that we, when we, when we did hit big plays, we hit them well. It's just finishing drives, uh, kind of in the same situation Denim is, is in. Uh, and looking at, at East St. John, he said, uh, they got a lot of skilled players across the board, uh, really dangerous kind of team. So it, it's more, more at this point taking, taking care of them though. Sure. And the third and uh, final playoff team would be Albany. So how they Correct. wrap up their season, and who do they got? Uh, it, Albany, we, we didn't talk about this. Happened last week. Uh, they wound up not playing the game at Bogalusa. That's correct. Uh, they wound up forfeiting that, that game uh, at Bogalusa. It wound up at first uh, at, uh, on a vote of the uh, the district principals. It was going to look like it was going to be moved possibly to a meet, uh, but then they went back and uh, you know, had a reconsideration by by principals, and uh, it wound up going back to Bogalusa. So I, I believe last Tuesday, uh, you know, I got a text from uh, Co- uh, Sammy Lacara, the principal there at, at Albany, and he said, I have an update on the game for you. So I think you and I were texting about the same time, and uh, uh, they decided to, out of uh, safety concerns, decided to forfeit that game. So it kind of gave them – you know, another week to kind of prepare and maybe get ready and get ready for the playoffs because they already knew they were going to be in the playoffs. So uh, it kind of, uh, Coach Lagori said it. Uh, when I talked to him Sunday, uh, when the pairings came out, he said it looks like we're we're going to be at a hundred percent healthy for the first time in a while. But then when I went and talked to him yesterday on Tuesday, uh, he said we got a little flu. <laughs> So he oh. said, he said, so we're going to see, you know, we're going to see where we are with that. So uh, maybe not a hundred percent healthy there, but, uh, uh, they got Lakeshore, uh, Lakeshore is number 14 seed. Albany came in at number 19. This is one of those, uh, playoff matchups where when you saw that the new configuration come out, uh, and, and we said it when it happened, Albany's in division two, which, uh, is a lot of four, a teams. Um, uh, so this is Lakeshore is a four, a team. So, uh, you know, we'll talk with Coach Glory about that. He said everybody in our district is playing in, uh, you know, Division Three, uh, except for us. So he said that's part of the challenge. Now, he said the plus there is that uh, Lakeshore run, runs the wing tee, which is what Albany runs. So he said our kids see it all the time. We practice against it. So we, we should be able to, uh, you know, know what's happening there. And he said they come straight at you on offense. So we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes there. Yeah, uh, going to be interesting to see for the Hornets. Uh, staying on that side of the parish, uh, you know, Springfield just started with a bang, and then injuries and illness has just derailed their season. How'd they wrap up against, uh, I guess it would have been North Lake? Had uh, St. Thomas. St. Thomas. Uh, Thomas Aquinas. It was 67 to 14. Uh, at this point, you know, I, I, talking to Coach Surpass, is just one of those things where, you start focusing on, you know, those younger guys and those younger guys getting reps. And, you know, the, the week before he told me, he said, at one point I look out there and we've got five freshmen out there on the field. Uh, and we, we've talked about it before where, you know, he said we're a two-way school. It's not like we're a 5A school where we have that senior starting and there's a, a junior right behind him to take his place if he gets hurt. He goes, most of the time it's a – it's an under underclassman, uh, you know, and, and a freshman at that. So um, that's what he's hoping, uh, that those young kids got this experience. Uh, you know, obviously didn't turn out score-wise like they wanted to, but it's something they hope they hope that they can build on and, and bring those kids back who are freshmen now is, you know, in the spring and, and next fall is, is sophomores, and they've got that year under their belt. Sure. Got that experience. Correct. Uh, and last but certainly not least, Live Oak wrapped up their season. Uh, lost to, uh, Santa Ma 21 to nothing. Uh, again, it's another case where, uh, some injuries and, uh, y- y'all already knew Live Oak was, was young, starting a lot of sophomores and then some injuries toward the end of the season kind of took, took their toll on them. Uh, so again, they're kind of in the same boat that Springfield is in. Hey, the young, young guys have gotten their, their, uh, the time under their belt and, and just want to see what happens moving forward and see how these young guys kind of progress. Sure. So let's move on into other sports. Uh, Cross country state meet is next week. Yes. Uh, I believe on Monday, that'll be at Northwestern state. Uh, uh, Looking at it in division one, you've got the uh, Denim Denim Springs girls qualified Walker boys and girls, live Oak boys and girls. So Livingston Parish will be well represented. Uh, Leader at the regional meet was Jacob Kennedy from Walker, who finished second. Uh, he's the uh, 
the Paris Cross Country Champ, uh, if you recognize that name. And then uh, Division Two, uh, the Albany boys and girls both qualified for the state meet with uh, Caden Boudreau leading the girls with a second place finish at the regional meet. Uh, also, uh, Luis Rodriguez from Marpaw finished fourth at the Division Five Region Three meet at Ponchatoula. So he will be at the state meet as well. Gotcha. He's well represented. Well represented. Uh, quite a few. Uh, and it will be in Natchitoches, as you Yes, think? that's correct. And what happens there is uh, top uh, top 25 individuals qualifies as individuals. And then if you finish in the top eight at the regional meet, you are, you automatic, you're as a team, automatically qualify for the state meet. So uh, congratulations to all those folks. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be keeping tabs on what they're doing next week. Good luck to them. We'll clearly have some time to talk about it next yes week. absolutely uh along with some of these playoff scores and last uh I, well no we got two more we got swimming and volleyball let's talk about volleyball uh, all of our teams are out uh but congratulations yes. to those ladies because i believe most teams made the postseason we had uh denim walker uh and let's see denim walker doyle and uh Springfield. Springfield. So four yeah. out of five. So, yeah, four out of five. So, so congratulations to those teams. I'm trying to read my notes, and I can't do it. <laughs> I, we've all been it's, there. <laughs> this is my handwriting. Uh, yeah, no, this, and I've had people look at it and go, how do you read that? And I, I say, as long as I can read it, it's good, but evidently I can't. So Right, you it, know. it takes practice. <laughs> so uh, just look in volleyball, uh, Springfield defeated Baker there uh, at, at home. Uh, they were at home in the first round. Uh, big thing here was that, that it uh, – Toward the end of that match, they had six seniors. So the way they they start that that last set was with all of the six of those seniors on the floor at the same time. When the rotation comes back around, they just happen to look. You know, Coach Abares, they're looking and they notice that the rotation worked to where all six of them were on the floor again at the end. So it was like she said, you know, she thought about maybe rotating somebody in, but then when you look and see that, it's like I need if if this is how it is, I'm going to let my six seniors end it on the on their home court. Uh, Knowing that the next round they had to go on the road, so and that's a, she said it's one of the coolest things that's as as a volleyball coach she's ever seen and, and been able to experience. And at certain times, uh, you know the, those seniors, it was kind of fitting those seniors kind of stepped up at, at key moments for them at, during that match. Um, then they went to Sacred Heart on Friday. Uh, Sacred Heart wound up uh, knocking them out in the second round. Uh, also in Division Four, uh, Doyle. Uh, made the playoffs, uh, first time in school history in their first year of varsity uh, uh, ball, and they wound up getting Notre Dame the defending champion right off the bat. Oof. So yeah, so it's one of those deals. But uh, you know, like like I talked to Coach Burns about, uh, it was one of those deals where learn a lot, you know, and and they see what it's going to take to now win in the playoffs, and as well, you know, she's also talked about beefing the schedule up because I think we talked about this a couple weeks ago when the pairings came out. Um, you have to play a certain amount of matches and, you know, Doyle was right underneath it, which made him kind of uh, come in later in the, in the filling out of the bracket, if you will, by the, by the athletic association. So I think you have to play 20 and they were at 18. So uh, part of that is going to be kind of beefing up the schedule, getting a few more matches in there, maybe some tournaments to, so they, they're not in that situation maybe next year. So um, let's see, uh, Central defeated Denham Springs and uh, North Shore defeated Walker in division one. So that those are both first round matches, but uh, like I said, it's uh, for for Denim. Uh, Coach Doobie said it was one of those things where you know you, you go to Central, you played at Central, uh, but you know she said they had a problem with uh, consistency sometimes, and that's that's kind of what happened the other night. You know when they played Central, and then with Walker uh, went through a lot of stuff. You know a coaching change uh, late in the season, uh, but it's uh, you know when I talked to Coach Williams, she just kind of talked about to. You know, being able to to do what you need to do, but also, uh, you know, creating good people uh, at the same time. So it's uh, we want to be good volleyball players, want to be good people, and she said, I think that's where we're headed. So, well, and can, uh, congratulations to Springfield on making it in the second round, and you know, congratulations to Doyle and the other two teams for that's making the postseason. Absolutely. Uh, moving to the last, but certainly not least, as I like to say, uh, swimming, which is kind of like soccer about ten years ago gaining a lot of popularity here in Livingston Parish. And uh, 
you know, state meet will be coming up Wednesday. Uh, I'm going to have to go look and once they put those things out and see exactly who we've got in there. But, uh, you know, I, I know the teams this, this season have been, you know, working hard, putting in the work. I've seen some, some Facebook posts on, on, uh, you know, uh, athletes getting their, their PRs in there, which is always what you want to do, especially at this time of the year. Uh, but like I said, that'll be Wednesday. Uh, the other part is, uh, basketball's here. I was just about to say, <laughs> to wrap up the show, we're going to talk about it. We are in a crossover it, week. It, this is definitely, this is the first crossover uh, portion of the the full year, if you will. Uh, Jamborees will be happening tomorrow. Uh, Holden's Holden's team's already playing the uh, the Simpson tournament this past weekend with the boys taking a runner-up and the girls going one and one. Uh, but the... Uh, the big schools and everybody will they'll get they'll get cranked up. I believe Monday is the first day they can play uh, for real. So here we are. Yep, and that also, of course, includes we already mentioned it soccer, uh, yes. indoor track, powerlifting, uh, all come with uh, with those. So wrestling one, as well. Wrestling. Oh, yes. Wrestling's already kicked off as well. So. Okay, so we've got a bunch of winter sports coming right at you. Uh, even though we are still in the are just getting started. With postseason football. There so, is no rest. So, uh, coaches, if, if I haven't gotten your schedules yet, please send them to me. That is important. It helps us keep up with what you're yes. doing. Yes. Yes. Anyway, sir, if you'll introduce yourself real quick. Hey, this is Rob DeArman, sports editor with the Livingston Parish News. And my name is McHugh David, publisher and editor of the news. Appreciate you guys out there for joining us for a, well, this is not around Livingston. This is from the cheap seats. Uh, this is where we talk about everything that's going on athletically here in Livingston Parish. Please remember the news is on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube. We are once a week in print on Thursdays at $7 a month to get that in your mailbox. We're also online, www.livingstonparishnews.com. We appreciate you joining us, and we're going to see you next time.